A quick note. We debunked the magnetic field event in science and data detail yesterday, but all you really need to debunk these recent stories of some major magnetic field event is the fact that you heard about it. The internet would be gone, electricity a memory, and we likely would be enduring the end of the world. Definitively no live streams or John Madden-like analysis hours later. Last night's video tells you exactly what did happen. Boom. No, that wasn't John Madden, that was Krakatoa. Shot plumes kilometers high, and while you can get the photos of her eruption and smoke anywhere online, this is the sulfur dioxide return from the Himawari satellite, and it is the coolest view taken of the event by far. Otherwise, the top lithospheric event was a large blot echo in the Philippines. Also, western U.S. a bit more active than usual once again. And speaking of the United States, we're getting an early alert about tomorrow. While there will be meteorologically relevant events throughout the evening tonight, the Easter Bunny skipped the eggs this year and is bringing hail, high winds, and tornado potential. With GFS models changing hourly, I highly recommend you take heed of your local forecasts in this area throughout today and tomorrow. Up first in the science news, something super cool. On the left, you see what you're used to seeing as the ocean floor on global maps, and on the right, where we are now using multi-band scans of the ocean floor. The paper is linked below, is free to read, and there's much more than just one square comparison from before and after. Lots of excellent maps on that link. Also making me rethink the name of the Antarctic Ridge since it smiles up into the Indian and East Pacific Oceans. We've got the first step in a multi-study analysis of local magnetic fields. Not local like your neighborhood or our planet, but those residing just outside the solar system. While this is going to take some imagination, this is about half the visible sky from just west of galactic center at zero degrees to a bit well east. Eventually, they hope to tease out the heliospheric nose effects and just map the fields of the galaxy, which is exceptionally useful because of the fact that modern astrophysics puts it as a rippling galactic current sheet, just like the sun's and any sphere magnets in an electric field. And when a star crosses it, there are two potential nova triggers coming in the wave. More on that in a moment. Up next, this is a good one. Obviously, the atmosphere has natural heating and cooling processes, especially the latter at nighttime, out of the sunshine. But we are now learning that the increased dust content blown around due to increased aridity caused a 40% drop in the cooling potential of the atmosphere in the second half of the 20th century, at least over Antarctica. This is a huge problem for those who want to blame CO2, as this is the first ever reconstruction of this dust radiative forcing for Antarctica. And by the way, you can't do those studies outside the poles because rain and wind wash and mix the samples that fall. And speaking of problems for climate science, they went ham on QBO inclusion in CMIP6 models, but they forgot to include the solar forcing of QBO in the math. They find that there has been little variation in the accuracy of the models, and folks, this reveals the key next next step after what's happening now. While solar particle forcing is getting into the game of climate science in a number of ways, not every correlation discovered is coming with it, and one of those seems to be its correlation forcing QBO. Thank you.